Hello, recruits, and welcome to Astroneer Academy 106 Chemistry. Last week, we announced that this week's course would be a deep dive into all things related to scrap. That was before we received communication from Exodynamics concerning upcoming added functionality surrounding scrap, along with a special mission. In light of this, we at Astroneer Academy have decided to push back the scrap course by just a few weeks. So today, we turn our focus to chemistry. Unlike the chemistry class from your high school years, we will not be memorizing periodic tables or learning what is a base or what is an acid. And we definitely will not be worrying about safety goggles. Instead, we're gonna make some things spin, we're gonna burn some things, we're gonna compress some stuff, and then we're going to put all of that stuff together to make even better stuff. So let's get started. We will be looking at three new objects today, but first we start with a review of one that we have previously discussed. In Astroneer Academy 104, we introduced the smelting furnace and its ability to apply heat to numerous natural resources to refine them into entirely new resources. As a quick review, the smelter will require 250 bytes to unlock and is crafted on the medium printer from two resin and one compound. You will need to supply three units of power to keep the smelter running at peak efficiency. For a full review of the smelter, including the resources it can refine and what it outputs, be sure to visit Astroneer Academy 104 or check out the Astroneer Wiki page linked below. Up until now, we have discussed natural resource collection in terms of either using your terrain tool or a vehicle equipped with a drill. In Astroneer Academy 202, we will be taking a look at scrap and how it enables you to trade for certain natural resources. But there is another way that you can obtain the non-metallic natural resources with just a little bit of soil and a lot of citrus force. The soil centrifuge requires 750 bytes to unlock and is crafted on the medium printer from two compound and one aluminum. And, as its name implies, the soil centrifuge requires soil in order to operate. You may have noticed that there is a single tier 1 slot on the front of the soil centrifuge near the top. That is where you place a small canister that contains soil. As a quick review, the small canister is unlocked from the beginning and requires one resin to craft on your backpack. You can fill it with soil by attaching it to your backpack and using your terrain tool in dig mode, or you can attach it to a vehicle with a drill attachment and use that drill to remove the soil from the ground. The canister has a small ring around the top indicating how full it is, plus you can just look to the sides to get a sense of how empty your full it is. When a canister is completely full, the center of the top of the canister features a green light that will illuminate. The canister will also produce an audible tone when it is completely Full. When using your terrain tool or a drill attachment on the vehicle, you will notice that there is a ring around the reticule that fills as your canister fills. If you're filling up more than one canister, it will take longer for that ring to complete. But a small canister is not your only option for storing soil. The medium canister can be unlocked for 2,500 bytes, and you can craft it on the small printer from one glass and one plastic. The medium canister holds the same amount of soil as 16 small canisters, and there are two ways to fill up a medium canister. The first is to attach it to a vehicle with a drill attachment, then use that drill to remove soil from the ground. Just like the small canister, a ring will appear around the drill reticule to indicate how full that medium canister is. If you have more than one medium canister attached to your vehicle, it's going to take longer for that ring to complete. And also like the small canister, the medium canister has a ring around the top that gives a visual indication of how full it is, a green light just above the withdrawal slot that will illuminate when the canister is full, it emits an audible tone when it's full, and you can see directly into the canister itself to gauge how much soil is currently stored. You can also fill a medium canister directly from small canisters that are attached to the medium canister itself or the same platform, vehicle, or storage as the medium canister. You can toggle a medium canister between enabling the deposit slot or the withdrawal slot. When the deposit slot is enabled, which is the tier 1 slot on the top of the medium canister, it will begin automatically pulling all available small canisters, one at a time, and emptying their soil into the medium canister. It will continue to empty all available small canisters until they're either 1, completely empty, or 2, the medium canister itself is completely full. Likewise, if you enable the withdraw slot on a medium canister, which is the tier 1 slot located on the side, it will begin pulling available small canisters and filling them with soil contained in the medium medium canister. It will continue filling small canisters until they're all full or the medium canister itself is completely out of soil. A medium canister on its own cannot supply soil to the soil centrifuge, however, though we will discuss how you can utilize a combination of both canister sizes in just a moment. 
So, coming back to the soil centrifuge, it requires two full small canisters to completely fill. There is a small see-through window on the front of the upper portion of the centrifuge that allows you to gauge how full it is, plus the control panel has a soil gauge on the right-hand side. The control panel also allows you to select which resource you wish to produce, and it displays the quantity of each resource that you will receive. Assuming that the soil centrifuge is completely full of soil, it can produce 8 of either compound, resin, or organic, 6 clay, 4 quartz, 2 graphite, or 1 ammonium. It will also require 4 units of power to operate at maximum speed. If you don't have that much power available, the soil centrifuge will operate at a slower pace. Fully powered, each production cycle of the soil centrifuge will take just over 30 seconds, consuming a total of 121.5 units of power. If there is sufficient storage space available, the soil centrifuge will distribute the newly created natural resource. If there isn't any storage space available, the resources will remain on the soil centrifuge themselves until you manually remove them. Upon completion of a production cycle, the soil centrifuge will also automatically pull available small canisters to refill itself with soil. If you have enough full soil canisters available, you'll see it pull one canister, empty its contents, then replace it while simultaneously pulling a second canister to continue refilling itself. And that brings us back to what we mentioned earlier and a pro tip for using the medium canister with a soil centrifuge. If you have the medium canister attached to the same platform as your soil centrifuge and small canisters, then you can enable the medium canister withdrawal slot. When the soil centrifuge places an empty canister back onto storage, the medium canister will immediately pull that empty small canister and refill it. That small canister then becomes available again to refill the soil centrifuge. It is a good idea to use three or more small canisters in this type of setup, simply because the soil centrifuge may occasionally fail to pull a newly filled small canister if it was being filled while no other small canisters were available to the soil centrifuge. By using this setup with one or more medium canisters available to refill the small canisters, you can keep your soil centrifuge running much longer between trips to go out and refill soil canisters. As we discussed earlier, the soil centrifuge does not produce any metallic natural resources. If you wish to obtain the metallic natural resources that are not available via the soil centrifuge, you will either need to extract them yourself or make use of the trade platform. The only natural resource that you cannot obtain through machinery at all is astronium, and for that, you're going to need a train tool or a vehicle with a drill attachment. The atmospheric condenser is the next piece of chemistry-related equipment available to astroneers. The atmospheric condenser has a research cost of 2,200 bytes, and it is crafted on the medium printer from one plastic, one glass, and one iron. While in use, the atmospheric condenser will consume power at a rate of 6 units per second. It operates by pulling in air from the atmosphere and condensing the selected gas into spherical gas canisters. Each of these gas canisters can hold up to 5 units of one gas, and they feature a 5 segment ring on top of them to indicate how much gas is contained within. To operate the atmospheric condenser, simply open up the control panel, select which gas you wish to condense, and hit the button in the bottom right hand corner. But pay attention to that control panel as it displays some very key information. As you scroll through the gases, you'll notice two things. First, some gases will display insufficient concentration, and that means that you cannot use the atmospheric condenser to obtain that gas on the planet you're operating it from. Second, each available gas will display a parts per unit, or PPU rating, for the specific planet on which you are located. The PPU rating is important for a couple of reasons. First, lower PPU ratings means it will take longer for the atmospheric condenser to obtain that gas. Second, while the atmospheric condenser will never consume power at a rate higher than 6 units per second, it will take much more power overall to obtain those gases with a lower PPU rating. The gas canisters are created automatically by the atmospheric condenser, so you don't have to worry about crafting canisters to store gases. If you have any partially filled gas canisters attached to storage on the same platform as the atmospheric condenser, it will pull those partial canisters and refill them. There is no way to combine partially empty gas canisters into each other, however. Like most machinery, the atmospheric condenser will continue to produce gas canisters as long as there is available storage on the same platform. If no storage is available, the atmospheric condenser ceases production, and the final gas canister it produced will be found attached to the Tier 1 slot on the front of the atmospheric condenser itself. The six gases that an atmospheric condenser can obtain are hydrogen, argon, methane, nitrogen, sulfur, and helium. 
Each gas has a different color when stored in the gas canister, making them fairly easy to tell apart at a glance. Though argon and helium can often be confused with each other because they're both different shades of blue. No planet or moon has all six gases available, and one gas, helium, can only be obtained on Aatrox. Additionally, Desilo, the moon of Silva, has no atmosphere, therefore no gases can be obtained there. Let's quickly look at the various PPU ratings for each gas on each planet and moon. Hydrogen is available on Silva at 75 parts per unit, Kalidor at 50 ppu, Vesanya at 100 ppu, and Novus at 25 ppu. Argon is available on Vesanya at 50 parts per unit, and Glacio at 100 ppu. Methane is available on Novus at 75 ppu, and Aatrox at 100 ppu. Nitrogen can be obtained on Silva at 100 ppu, Vesanya at 75 ppu, and Aatrox at 50 ppu. Sulfur is available on Kalidor at 100 ppu, and Aatrox at 75 ppu. And finally, as we discussed earlier, helium is only available on Aatrox at a measly concentration of 25 parts per unit. In Astroneer Academy 401, we will discuss some pro tips on setting up gas outpost bases to ensure that you are obtaining gases in the most efficient manner possible. All of these gases produced by an atmospheric condenser, when combined with natural or refined resources, can produce composites in the chemistry lab. But one of these gases in particular, hydrogen, can also be used in conjunction with some dynamite to create some rather spectacular explosions. And if you place enough hydrogen together with a bit of dynamite, you might even be able to create an explosion large enough to destroy an entire mountain. Not that I would ever personally consider or even condone such reckless usage of explosives. Before we move on to the chemistry lab, however, here's a quick pro tip for keeping the atmospheric condenser silent when it's not in use. The atmospheric condenser can be a rather noisy object, even when it's idle. If you don't want to listen to it while it's idling, you do not need to remove power from it. Simply open up the control panel, select a gas with an insufficient concentration, and the atmospheric condenser goes silent. The chemistry lab has a research cost of 1,600 bytes, and it is crafted on the medium printer from one ceramic, one tungsten, and one glass. It will consume power at a rate of 3 units per second. Much like the smelter, the chemistry lab takes natural or refined resources, applies heat, and yields composite resources. In some cases, various gases will also be required to create the desired composite. The composite resources produced by the chemistry lab can be utilized to create numerous useful objects and even fuel for jetpacks and thrusters. To use the chemistry lab, simply open the control panel and select the composite resource that you wish to create. The quantity of the required natural or refined resource will be indicated on the display along with any gases that are required. If you have those required ingredients, simply press the big button to get started. When complete, the chemistry lab produces an ever so satisfying ding to let you know that the composite is complete. So let's take a look at each composite resource and what is required to create them. Rubber is produced from organic and resin. Plastic comes from carbon and compound. Aluminum alloy is produced from aluminum and copper. Tungsten carbide can be obtained from carbon and tungsten. Graphene is produced from graphite and hydrazine. Diamonds, the most sparkly of all resources, are created from two graphene. Hydrazine can be produced from two ammonium and hydrogen. Silicone can be obtained from resin, quartz, and methane. Explosive powder is the result of two carbon and sulfur. Steel comes from carbon, iron, and argon. Titanium alloy is produced from titanium, graphene, and nitrogen. And finally, nanocarbon alloy is the result of combining steel, titanium alloy, and helium. Each stack of a composite resource that you produce will only consume one-fifth of the contents of a gas canister. Of course, that means that you can create up to five of each composite from one gas canister, provided you have the required natural refined resources. When all five units of a gas canister is consumed, the gas canister is destroyed. 
But as we discussed a few moments ago, you can refill a partially empty gas canister by returning it to storage attached to the same platform as the atmospheric condenser. If you wish to create a large number of any particular composite resource, simply attach all of the required resources and gases to storage on the same platform as the chemistry lab. When it finishes producing each stack of the selected composite resource, you can simply press the button again to begin producing another of the same composite. The one that you just created will automatically be moved to available storage as the doors of the chemistry lab closes and it'll begin producing the next stack of that composite. You can repeat this process over and over until you exhaust your supply of available resources. Do pay attention to your storage, however. If no storage is available, the chemistry lab has a really bad habit of dropping your composite resource stack directly beneath itself and onto the platform that is holding it. To get to it, you can try to quickly grab it while the chemistry lab doors are open. If you can't manage to grab the composite that way, you're going to have to remove the chemistry lab from the platform to retrieve your resource. If you have difficulty remembering which combination of resources is required for a composite recipe, or even if you cannot remember which refined resources are derived from which natural resources, the Astroneer Wiki has a very helpful resource tree diagram. You can find this diagram at the link in the description down below. This resource tree not only identifies every resource available to an astroneer, but it also clearly illustrates where you can locate each resource and the progression from natural to refined to composite. This resource tree has proven to be an indispensable tool for me personally, and I find myself referring to it often. For those of you who were paying close attention as we discussed the recipe for each composite resource, you might have noticed that graphene is required to create a few other composite resources, namely diamond and titanium alloy. Nanocarbon alloy indirectly requires graphene as well, since titanium alloy is one part of its recipe. And as we discussed, graphene is the yield from hydrazine and graphite. This, coupled with the fact that you need hydrazine to keep your jetpacks in the air and your hydrazine thruster equipped shuttles flying, means that hydrazine can become a scarce resource very quickly. Because of that, you might want to keep a large supply of ammonium and hydrogen on hand if you plan on producing the more complicated composites while also ensuring you have fuel for jetpacks and thrusters. That concludes our course on chemistry, and it also wraps up our 100 level courses. So congratulations on completing this first semester of Astroneer Academy. You are one quarter of the way to graduating from the Academy and earning your certificate of completion and maybe even the chance to win an Astroneer Academy patch or sticker. Stay tuned for details on those giveaways coming soon. Next semester, we'll look at vehicles, base building, traveling around the solar system, and much, much more. And the next three semesters will bring even more voices to the Astroneer Academy project as additional people have signed on to contribute to editing our text, providing voiceovers, and even showcasing sculptures and other creative works. All of that still lies ahead in Astroneer Academy. But until then, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.